One of the things that's very interesting is, is most PhDs do extensive training and research methods and writing and all that kind of stuff, and virtually no PhD, at least in, in many areas, have any training on teaching. And so the concept of what is a learning objectives and what does that really mean, and I mean, it was something they just put down because that was part of the, the materials, but how you measure it, how you think of it, how you gather information, Faculty understanding of the process and their comfort level impacts buy-in, and the more comfortable they are, the, the more apt they are to involve themselves and then to recognize the value of the process. Then they discover that they, they can do it, they are doing it, it's really not nothing, nothing new. They're just putting in a framework that they hadn't thought of before. Start small, very basic, um, not make it too complicated, and, and then we can add to that. We spent several, several months figuring out these general statements of what we thought a chemical engineer should look like. One of them is they have to be able to apply chemical engineering fundamentals. One of them is they have to be able to communicate in written and oral forms. And we started filling out these spreadsheets, if you were, on how did it fit. Once we did that, then it was, okay, what's missing and what do we need new? From these general program level outcomes, we went into each one of our courses and made specific course level outcomes. Identify the objectives and how these objectives then fit with the program objectives. And you don't have to do that. I'll tell you what the program objectives are. You give me the materials that you've got for class and we'll put them in. It can work if we make it what it needs to be to help us. And not necessarily fitting somebody else's model but creating creating a structure that works for us. We evolved that very quickly because there was mass rebellion and frankly it didn't make any sense to those of us leading the effort to, okay, let's really look at the program and, and see what we need to do to make the program better. We had to make it useful for our, our discipline um, to improve teaching and learning rather than just to assess, to, to to meet someone, a perceived expectation that somebody else had about reporting. We dropped all the outside terminology. We don't use assessment. We use continuous improvement. We don't use rubrics. We use grading guides. We use the terminology that, that faculty use that are not offensive, they're not threatening, they're not imposed from outside. And we say to the faculty very clearly, we're looking at how do we make this program better continually. You've got to be able to assess whether you have accomplished them. And we simply talk about, okay, what worked, what didn't work, why, what are you planning to do? Is there anything that went really well in the, in the course? Is there anything that didn't go well? Is there anything we should change about these course level objectives? Am I happy with what I'm getting out of it? And if not, what changes do I need to make? And they're empowered to, to make those changes. And then the undergraduate committee goes through, they look at all the comments from the faculty, all the data from the students and the faculty, all the numerical data, and come up with any recommendations that they see fit. Even though not everyone has the same level of commitment that comes to the, to the table at, at a given time, what I've known is that as, as people recognize the value, they're much more um, open to, to participating and, and in some cases um, enthusiastic about the outcome of, the, of that process. And the entire focus is not an evaluation of the course or the faculty member, it's how do we make this better?